understand what the goal is, but what it takes on a daily basis to achieve that. Um, again, attention to detail, effort are, are, are huge pillars of what we look to accomplish in the weight room. And also the mindset of hard work, right? Winter programs across college football, a lot of people are doing the same things, right? What's going to set you apart from those other programs across the country? It's not what we're asking you to do from a day-to-day -day standpoint, standpoint that's required. It's what are you willing to do extra. So um, I think those three things are, are, are things that we look to, we look to foster um, during winter training. Hey, Corey, Warren Michaelson. Where did that passion of uh, I think for me, it, it, it came from me and a walk on myself. And I, I utilized the weight room to give myself uh, an advantage that I probably didn't have with some of the scholarship athletes when I was at the University of Georgia. Um, and, you know, through, through the weight room, through training, the belief that, you know, my strength and conditioning coaches had in me, right, and their communication with the coaching staff, I was able to be a contributor on that football team. So I think that's initially where that drive came from uh, in utilizing the weight room to achieve the goals that you want as a player. Nebraska with a really historic walk-on program. Mm -hmm. How much does it mean to you? A ton, right? Like, you know, I, I, I did a podcast a couple of weeks ago, and we, we hit on that. We hit on the fact that, you know, myself was a walk-on. Coach Rule was a walk-on. So we understand the level of commitment that those guys – you know, have to have in order to to not only make the teams that they're that they're trying to be on, but also to be huge contributors on those teams. So it's huge. Uh, the walk-on culture that Nebraska has, having come from that background, you know, it means even more to me to to help these guys know and understand that you can achieve what you want to achieve if you're willing to put in the work. Uh, Sean Callahan of Husker Online, uh, you came in right away in November with Coach Rule on day one. How important was it to you and just have an extra few weeks? before players went home to kind of establish what you wanted to do with guys and when you got going back in January? It was super important, right? And the minute Coach Rule uh, reached out to me and, and, and told me what the plan was, I was going to get on the first, the first thing smoking out here that I could because I'm a firm believer in, you know, the fact that you have to build relationships, you know, in, in order to get what you, what you want out of these student athletes, right? I can have the best strength and conditioning program in the world, but if I don't have the buy-in of those athletes, it isn't going to mean anything. So them seeing me uh, – come to Lincoln with the head coach, I think that signifies the level of importance uh, that it means to me, and not only me, but the coach rule in his, in his head strength and conditioning coach, but also, you know, hey, we have to maximize the time that we have with you. So if I can get in front of you, communicate to you some of the goals and the expectations all right, in, in November, December, prior to us starting in January, that just gets us a little bit ahead of the curve. You can think back, Corey, to that, to that time when you and Coach Rule and, and Coach Cooper were coming out here on that first day. How much needed to be said from Coach Rule to you guys about what was expected and how to get your, you know, your program started? Was there already a, a, a great understanding of what you needed to do when you when you hit the ground? Yes, sir. Having worked with Coach Rule for the number of years that I've worked with him and Coach Cooper, you know, you you build that rapport with one another and you do understand what it looks like. Uh, from 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 the standpoint of starting at a program, right? We we did it at Baylor together. We were in Carolina together, you know. And now at Nebraska, it's it's an added advantage to having had to having had the working relationship that we had, you know, in the past. So uh, there's always constant communication between myself and Coach Rule, right, with respect to the the expectations that he has not only from a weight room standpoint but a program standpoint you know we all have to speak the same language we all have to echo the same things within our respective areas how does the strength and conditioning field change since when you were a college football player and how does it remain the same Ooh, a ton you know I, some of the 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 technological advances that have been made even when you know from when I was a player, and that was about 10 years ago now. I finished up at the University of Georgia in 2013. Um, the, the advances that, that have been made in this field have been great. You know, right back when I was a player, we didn't have uh, in our weight room devices that could track, you know, bar velocity. They may have been out there, but we didn't utilize them, right? The catapult GPS was just being introduced into the United States into the United States. So we didn't have the ability to track, you know, player loads and velocities that we have now. So with those technological advances, utilizing that, 
to our advantage to understand where to take the training. That's been that's been huge. Um, the things that have stayed the same, you know, at the end of the day, 45 pounds is 45 pounds, right? You got to pick up a barbell and you got to train. You know, I'm a firm believer that there's no substitute for strength and no excuse for the lack of it. So from that standpoint, we're going to get on the barbell and we're going to train. You know, it, 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 it takes work to achieve the goals that you set for yourself and want to achieve. So that's the same. But the way in which you approach it as a result of the technology that we have today, you know, that approach may be a little bit different. Hey, Corey, Luke Mullen from the Lincoln Journal Star. When you're training linemen, how do you balance mobility and agility versus, you know, adding strength? Uh, you know, I think from a positional standpoint, right, like you do what you need to do in the weight room. It, it's important for all of these athletes to be able to bend and move well, right? Those were one of the main goals of this winter, right, improve strength and mobility. So, like, that's, that's, that's the baseline. Never going to load up poor movement quality because that's how you get hurt but at that same time identifying what they need from a positional standpoint right like those guys are able to lift more low than some other guys right conditioning factors need to be a little bit a little bit different they don't need to run the same yardages as some of the skill guys right so looking at it from a big combo skill standpoint we we do a good job as a staff and giving them what they need to excel as athletes on the football field those guys didn't come here to be to be weightlifters but we're going to use the weight room and use what we do from a training standpoint to make them the uh the optimal athletes that they came here to be and here in town. Don't We've seen me. some of the videos that you guys have been doing uh, over the course of the winter, including going out in the snow on the field. Is that your idea? Uh, I'm not going to take full credit for that one. It was a, it was a combination of, uh, of individuals who came up with that idea, but I was all for it once it was introduced. Coach Rule talked a few weeks ago about having like a physical therapist like in the weight room staff and sort of those complementary parts how important are they and also in like the recovery process like how big is a deal is that and everything right so we don't need four or five Corey Campbells in the weight room right I have a niche that I feel uh, the other guys on my staff they feel certain niches right and one of those is um, Coach Hobbs, you're speaking of as the uh, as the physical therapist, right? He has an eye for things that I don't have an eye for, right? In terms of in terms of movements, in terms of how do you return an athlete who may have sustained an injury back to the field safely, right? And when I when when I can't devote uh, my full time and attention to it, when I don't have that because I have to deal with the team as a whole, I can rely on him you know, to be able to do that. And from a from a sports science standpoint, talking about recovery and regeneration, in the weight room and through training, we're tearing our bodies down, right? How 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 they how they regenerate and and become, you know, the athletes that we need them to be from a training standpoint, that that takes place recovery, regen, sleep, nutrition, hydration, right? So when we look at developing the athletes here, it's an it's a holistic approach. Um, you know, you have myself as a, as a strength and conditioning coach, and on my staff you have individuals with different niches, but you also have to look at the nutritionists, you have to look at the sports scientists, you, you have to look at the athletic medicine staff, because it takes a village um, to train these athletes and to get, them to, to get them to Saturdays and perform at a high level on Saturdays. It takes more than just strength, but, you know, that's why we function um, like we do uh, as, as a football care staff. Corey, uh, Coach Rule has talked about some of those holistic, you know, new age technological advances that there have been in strength and conditioning. Um, you know, he said he, even if he doesn't understand them, you know, he goes to, to you and the people who, who do. Um, can you speak to, to his willingness and, and want to, to, to be at the forefront in this area? And also what moving into the building next door when you do before next season is going to do to help you in those ways? Right. Coach Rule has a real good grasp on the best availability. Sorry, the best ability being availability, right? And in order to do that, we got to keep these guys healthy and keep them on the field. Uh, and as, as we just talked about, recovery and regeneration is of the utmost importance because football is a violent game, right? It, it requires uh, heavy demands from a training standpoint. But in order for us to, to, to be the capable athletes that we need to be on Saturdays, we got to take care of ourselves. So he's, 
in constant communication, right? Like if, if he sees something that pops up that might be a good idea, he'll shoot that info to myself and it's like, hey coach, you know, check this out, right? Is this something that we need to incorporate that we aren't? Um, I also think the experiences in the NFL uh, have done well for us with respect to that. Like, you know, those guys, they get a little bit older, a little bit more wear and tear on their bodies. It is super imperative to get those guys to Sundays, right? And and you have to maximize your time within that week. So in order to do that, you have to stay on the cutting edge of what you can use from a technological standpoint to help keep these guys ready and available. And going into that new facility, um, you know, that, that, that was a primary focus in it, right? Like we're looking at what we utilize in the NFL, some some modalities that we had at Baylor, and we're going to get those things in that building because it, it's our job to supply these athletes with the best of the best, um, and, and that's very important to Coach Rule. What's one addition or tweak that you made to the weight room plan when you got here that wasn't in there before for the new weight room? Uh, for the new weight room, uh, looking at it, you know, I, I came in at a point where I was able to to put my stamp on it. Right, so kind of looking at it from a rack, a rack setup standpoint, from what we're what we are going to incorporate from a recovery and regen standpoint, um, I did have the ability to 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 say, you know, what I what I wanted in that space. So uh, I've had a ton of uh, a ton of input, you know, and I'm I'm appreciative of the fact that I came in at a time where I did have the ability to have that input because we need to set that space that space up to train how we need to train and to recover how we need to recover. Is that a recruiting advantage or is it? Most definitely. Um, and I think, you know, that, that doesn't just hold true for us here in Nebraska. That's everywhere in, in college sports, right? Facilities are a recruiting advantage. And I think the added benefit for us here is we'll have the newest and we'll have the best, you know. It, Moving forward, people are mo people are model their uh, their structures off of ours, you know. So that is when when you have the new and shiny things that attracts attention. That's attention well wanted. Is that is that a, is that a stressful situation to make that move in, in a time when you're also going to be getting ready for the season? I mean, I, or do you have people who are going to handle that? I don't know if you're going to take stuff from here over there, or is it all new stuff over there? Uh, that'll it, it'll primarily be new, but you know, I won't. I won't handle anything with that. My problem focus during that period of time is training the guys. When they tell us we can get into the new building, we'll be in the new building. Until that, we'll be where we're at. Is it, is it easy to pick out leaders pretty early on from how they respond from their workouts or, or, or not? Uh, I'm not going to say it's easy to pick them out. You know, I, I think these guys, they, uh, they do what we ask them to, you know, right? Leadership, uh, leadership is a process. You know, and you you may be able to identify some guys who possess some traits that you see early on, but to determine if they're going to be an effective leader, that's going to take time. Corey, you played against Nebraska when you were in college. What do you remember about those bowl games? Ooh, uh, I remember Nebraska being a tough team. You know, uh, d during the time that I played, we were playing against guys like Will Compton and Amir Abdullah. You know, um, Amir's a guy that I had the opportunity to coach in Carolina, so we, we talked about those battles. Um, we came out one and one against Nebraska, but I will say those were two of the toughest teams that as a college athlete that I had to play against. When you first met Matt Rule, and, uh, what, what stood out about him and why, why you feel feel like you've connected so well with him you know, over the years? Uh, I think it goes back to my college days. Um, coach Rule and I, we share a, a, a strength coach and Coach John Thomas. Um, John Thomas was my strength coach with respect to my position while I was at the University of Georgia, and he was the head strength coach at Penn State when, uh, when Coach Rule was a player there. You know, and when I was working at the University of Cincinnati, I had the opportunity to meet uh, not only Coach Rule, but Coach Scott, who was a shrimp coach at the time. And, you know, from there, we share similar ideals. Um, again, understanding what it took from a walk-on standpoint to be a contributor on your college football team, but also to be coached by the same strength coach, right? Those individuals have, have a good eye in seeing the qualities of, of young men, but also, you know, who mesh well together. And when Coach went to Baylor and Coach Thomas reached out and, you know, he made that introduction, it was, um, you know, it was, a, uh, it was a bond that was well received. So from the minute I went on an interview down there uh, to meet Coach Rule, 
you know, we 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 kind of knew who we were as individuals, and it was like, hey, if if Coach Thomas signs off on you, then you're pretty good in my book, and you know, I'm still with him now, so <laughs> I guess I was pretty good in his book. Thank you,
We'll have Coach Raiola next, and Coach Dvorak's here, and we'll be after after Donovan. So, go ahead with your questions, guys. Hey, Coach. It's been a couple of months since uh, since you know you decided to stay on, and, and, and you go. What were those conversations, those initial ones, with Coach Rule like about uh, why he wanted you to stay and why you decided to stay? Um. It's just, you know, I'm just, first of all, I'm just grateful for this opportunity, you know, to work with Coach Rue and the staff. Um, it's been awesome. It's a great group of men, and uh, it's a great group of men for me to learn from. And uh, it was good, you know, we just talked about philosophies and our beliefs and all those things, and we meshed well, and it was awesome. It was great, great talks. Was it, was it a decision for you? I mean, did you characterize it? Was it a dip, difficult decision or was it easy? Not at all. This is a special place to us, to me, and, you know, my family, so. And then being around these men, Coach Rue and his staff, I mean, it was a no-brainer for me. One of the things Coach Rule said was when he talked to players, they all said they all were favorable about the job you'd done and, and what you meant to them. What did what that mean to you to, you know, to have that feedback from the guys you've worked with? Um, you know, first thought was let's keep improving, <laughs> you know, um, improve, improve our standards, just, just everything that we do, you know, our process and everything we do is just – Focus on improvement. Had you ever, I mean, had you been through anything, been through a situation like that in your career where there was a change and, you know, you, you had kind of a period of uncertainty and, you know, went through what, what, it, what it was like for you in December? Anything that you, you were able to lean on with your, your upbringing and coaching that helped you in that time? Um, a couple of years ago in Chicago, you know, um, the offensive line coach got let go and, you know, he was the guy that brought me in there. Um, and there's a, you know, that day, it was just one day that, and then later in the day I found out. But um, that was really the only experience I've been through. Um, my thing was just keep going to work, keep showing up, you know, keep doing what I'm doing. And, uh, the, you know, and everything worked out great. <clears throat> Satterfield uh, talked about how you and you, you two jived immediately. Why do you think that was? What, why do you think you guys were on the same page so quickly? Oh, uh, just same beliefs. Coach Raiola, you brought in Ben Scott, um, someone that you had a relationship with. What did you like about Ben, and, and what can he bring to your group that you, you have coming back? Uh, just he has a lot of experience playing at, playing at a high level, um, and you know he's he's doing well. You know since he's been here, um, you know he's he's a smart kid. Um, you know, and, and he's he's still learning our standards, and you know, and but he's he's been. Great for us, you know, as, as an older guy that's got a lot of playing experience, you know, um, and then everyone around him just uh, accepted him, which, you know, made the transition better for him. How do you feel like your O line played last year? And then what are your expectations for this year? Um, I thought as the year went on, they improved every game, which is, you know, being an offensive lineman, it's such a process, right? You got a new coach, new techniques new calls, all those different things. And as you watch the season go on, they got better and better and better. And that's all we're focused on. We're focused on today, um, focusing on our process of improvement. And um, that's, that's what we're going forward with. How much could it help? Does it help at all that this is your second year with these guys? Is that, is that something that can help? help yes, you? absolutely, absolutely. How so, how so, how does that help? The same voice, you know, they're hearing the same voice, the same, the same coaching points over and over and over and over. And, you know, when they get out there, the game's so fast that it just simplifies their thoughts so they can play fast. When you went to find Ben or when you brought him in here to recruit him, was it specifically to find, to, to find a center? I know he's played tackle and center, but it, you know, speak to the importance of having a center to be able to build that line around. And is that the, the, the intention all the way with him? Um, well, first off, with the center question, that's a special position. That's a specialized position, right? You're the brains. You, you set everybody. You make sure everyone's on the same page, right? You're looking for a guy that's a natural leader that's willing to get up there and, and, and communicate well and make sure everyone's on the same page. Um, so, and that's a special position to me. That's the position I played. Um, but, uh, and, you know, just Ben's experience, you know. Uh, we don't know where he's going to play yet, you know. Um, but he's uh, doing a great job with, you know, whatever we throw at him. Common trait among those four Nebraska offensive line players that you just that you just signed back in December. Toughness. What did, did you seek that out when you recruited? Like 
sort of thing that, that you're looking for and how do you how do you evaluate it? How do you find toughness when you how do you know you see toughness? Um, you know, just the whole process of the recruiting, right? Like you, you, uh, you watch the film, right? How hard they play. Um, and then you, you figure out when you get around them and their families, right? What their beliefs are, right? Um, and, and just their demeanor about how they go about their business. What does it mean to have Nuri back? It's going to be great. Uh, it's great for the whole unit. You know, everyone's working hard and working together and, and, and I'm excited to watch their improvement. Work with him at all? I mean, obviously, he couldn't be a part of games, but what was your exposure to him last year while he was out? He came to all the meetings. How interchangeable is Turner Corporate? I mean, what, what, what can you envision for him this year? A guy that could maybe play just about anywhere for you? Yeah, he's, he's uh, you know, he's a. Uh, you know, he's one of those guys you can play outside at tackle or, or guard, right? So it's always good. But we work all those guys in different spots just so, you know, they're preparing. You know, who knows, right? Last year was pretty interesting, right? So uh, we just work them, you know, on the left side, right side. So they're working on different stances, different types of movements. Uh, you know, the left side obviously is different than the right side a little bit, right? Um, so, you know, it, it's great having guys like that, you know, that you know, hey, something happens, he can move here or there. And that's what you try to build, right? Every guy should be, you know, in that. Now, center's a little different, but, you know, every guy should be able to play tackle, guard, or center, right? So that's what, you know, when we go through this process, we're working them all, all over the, all over the uh, line. With Teddy out for the spring recovering, so who do you plan to kind of use at left tackle? Would it be Turner or would it be some other guys at left tackle? Yeah, we're working through that right now. You know, Turner, um, you know, we can throw Bryce over there. We can throw other guys out there, right? So Nuri could go out there. You know, we're still, we're still figuring all those things out. Um, there's nothing set in stone right now, so. Did I, did I hear you right? You said Ben Scott not necessarily earmarked for center. Yeah, you know, we're just seeing seeing who the best five is right now, and we'll figure that out once we get our pads on and all those things. But, you know, we're just focusing on the work that, that we're doing right now. Who would you look at center besides Scott? Who, who, who are the clubhouse leaders there? Um, there's no clubhouse leader yet. You know, there's, you know, Ethan Piper can play center. Um, Turner's a guy that we could play at center. Um, you know, there's some other guys out there that we could work at center as well, so. How many you guys coach? How would you describe Coach Rule? Like what would, how would you describe his leadership style and how you've met him? Um, you know, he, he holds everyone accountable, you know, and um, you know, what to, you know what, what to expect when you show up to work. Um, be on top of your things. Uh, do your job. And, uh, you know, he's been great. You know, I'm, I'm, I'm thankful to be, you know, an uh, offensive line coach under Coach Rule. How much, when you talk about accountability when it comes to recruiting, what maybe is the vibe there that you're similar or different to what you worked for, with before? Um, I think, you know, he, it's, everything is just, you know, it's, it's always pretty similar, you know, but I think just making sure, right, everyone, everything's being recorded, right, you're, you're taking good notes and, and making sure you have good notes on wherever you go and, and certain players, so. How have you seen uh, Teddy, you know, stay engaged and work through, you know, back-to-back -back season with tough injuries and just what, what you've seen behind the scenes from him, even if he's not quite available yet? Um, Teddy's one of the, the best teammates I've, I've seen. You know, he's just a great, great p person. And, and, and all our guys are, are like that in that room, you know, and, and I'm thankful for that. Um, but he, he's been in every meeting. You know, he didn't miss, you know. Um, and he's just, he's just been doing a good job staying engaged. You know, it's, it's hard, you know, you go through those things. And, you know, as a young guy, right, you can think of different things that could, could sway you from not showing up every day and, and, you know, Teddy, and he's engaged to the point where he's helping guys out and coaching guys up, so. How do you feel about your numbers overall? Just the guys you have in the program at the position group and, you know, Coach Rule, I think the last time we talked to him mentioned probably still needing some more at O-line. Yeah, you know, you always look for good offensive linemen. One, two more? Did you require Nori to be at those meetings, or is that just something he did, did on his own? It's just a standard. What have you learned about transfer portal recruiting after the last two years of doing it? Um, do a lot of research. On, on, on Jason Machachak, um, he was kind of a late scholarship offer, but you had built a relationship with him over time. How did that? How did that relationship maybe come into being a scholarship offer? And was that something that 
that you felt like you could do once Rule became the head coach? Like, did you want to offer him well long before you offered him, or how did that all kind of work out? You know, Jason is a, is the type of player that you know that you love in, in this place, right? He's a tough kid, strong, um, loves football, right? So uh, when that opportunity came up, you know, we 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 attacked it. Feel like you had to get approval from Coach Rule, or did you? It was a it was a uh, whole full staff, um, you know, um, deal. So is that so? Is that follow up on that? Is that your guy? Is Jason your guy? And and Mason Goldman too. Those guys are kind of listed both ways: offense, defense. It's our guys. Yeah. <laughs> do, you, do you expect to have those guys day one on offense? I'm not sure. <laughs> All good. Thanks, guys. All right. Best for last, I guess. Yeah, exactly. I just want to say uh, thanks for, for allowing me to be here. I'm excited to be here at Nebraska. It's an amazing place. So thank you, guys. Excited about the opportunity. Questions, guys? Hey, Coach. Sean Callahan with Husker Online. When, when did you know you were coming here, and, and how hard was it to kind of be quiet about it for, for quite some time and not maybe be publicly involved in recruiting and things going on over January? Yeah, so um, a, new, a new coach had – when coach took the job, he had uh, he had reached out to me, uh, asked me if I if I wanted to come coach the linebackers, and, and him and I had that conversation, and I finished the season in Carolina and, and came out here when it was done. What made you want to come to Nebraska? Well, number one, the, the tradition here is unbelievable, but also I've been with Coach Rule for a long time. Him and I have a really good relationship with each other. Um, I know that he's going to do something great. We're going to do something great here. So it's something that I wanted to be a part of. Rob, did you kind of, uh, Mitch Sherman from The Athletic, did, did you kind of get started um, in coaching early? I'm, I'm sorry, I was looking at your, at your uh, bio from Temple, but if you can kind of take us through that. Yeah. You played, got hurt, started in coaching. How did that, how did that, this profession begin for you? Yeah, so I, I played two years. I played my sophomore and my freshman year. Coach Rule was my head coach when I was a sophomore. So I played, you know, all the way to my last game of my sophomore year. I got injured in the last game. Uh, unfortunately, that ended my career. I had a knee injury. And, you know, at one point I, I went up to coach and I'm like, coach, like, you know, they said I'm done. Like, I don't know what to do. You know, football's been my whole life. So he's like, well, why don't, why don't you just help out and start coaching? So. I started student assistant coaching um, at the end of my sophomore year, just helping out, doing every, everything I can, sitting in the coaches' meetings, you know, coaching the players. So I started out there, and then when coach took the Baylor job, I went down there with him as quality control. I was there for two seasons. And then I left there and took a job at Lehigh University coaching the D-line for two years, which was an awesome experience for me as well. And then I uh, go to Carolina with coach for two seasons, and then uh, now I'm here. So it's been about... 10 years um, and a lot of it with coach. Did that just happen because of the opportunity that was presented to you when you got hurt in college? Or did you think even before that that it was something you wanted, you knew you would want to do eventually? Yeah, uh, that's a good question. I wasn't really sure what I wanted to do. Um, I was an education major in college. I've always had a passion to help young people. And uh, football felt like the way that I could do that. You know, I've, I've done it my whole life. I've always really enjoyed the game and helping people, so I wanted to, to stay involved as much as I could. What have your conversations with uh, Nick and Luke been like? They've obviously been starters for two years now. Yeah, uh, we've had great conversations. You know, my biggest thing coming here is getting to know those guys. You know, I want to build a relationship with them, and obviously we started to do some football and workouts and all those type of things, but to me, I need to have a really good personal relationship with everyone in that room. So. Um, it's been good to to kind of see where their minds are at, you know, with previous schematic things and what they need to improve on. So just really getting to know them as people and getting more of the football now. Kevin, in Omaha World Herald, you talk about who's in your room. Do you have a sense of who that is right now with, you know, a new a new defensive system coming in and an edge rusher and a linebacker, or is that still sort of being sorted out? Yeah, I think we're still kind of sorting it out. 
uh, we're evaluating the guys right now, their movement, running around. You know, they're all in their shorts and shirts. So we're not really doing football yet. So I think it'll take through the spring to really evaluate to see what's on the roster, what it, you know, where can we improve some areas? Where do we need to help the guys in certain areas? So it's still a work in progress. What are some qualities of a, a top end linebacker that you're going to be looking for? Yeah, so we're going to try to find the guys that are tough, smart, competitive, but also have great traits. They're long, they can run, they're explosive, they can change direction. Uh, obviously, size is, is a huge factor in that as well. So we're trying to find all those things um, and make, make sure they're right for us. White's defense? Um, that's a great question. Chaos? Chaos. How does that manifest itself schematically from what you did? And not giving away secrets here, but like how do you how does that manifest itself? Well it's it's a uh, it's structured in a way that we can get to a lot of different fronts. We can get a lot of different coverages in, in many different ways of doing it. So it's hard to describe because we could do a lot of things, but it could also look the same. So um, it's it's been it's been really cool to to learn the system with Coach White and um, see see how we could you know win on defense. Is it anything like anything that you you've been with before? Yeah, very similar. Uh, a lot of a lot of systems I've been in before. We've we've run four down, we run three down, we run five down, we went in a three three stack stuff. So I've been part of systems that are like it. Yeah. I follow up to the question about the personnel, and, and I know maybe you don't know, like you said, exactly who's going to be with you, but um, question about a, a couple of the transfers, uh, MJ and, and Chief Borders. Mm -hmm. You expect them to have those guys? Uh, in, in, I mean, are they coming coming to you now with stuff as as your as your position coach? Yeah, right? yep, yep. They've been in my room and trying to find the right space for all those guys. But they've been a pleasure to work with. What do you What do you think in particular about those two and just the experience that they have coming from from programs that they were in and what they can add here? Um, nothing, nothing in particular to them too. I think everyone within the room has been doing a really good job. Um, they're tough kids. They work hard. They're competitive, and and that's what we're looking for within the room. Hey, Rob Luke Mullen from the Lincoln Journal Star. You know, we we've, we've heard about kind of how the staff has a united you know message in recruiting, but. What's kind of your style? How do you pitch kids on the university? Uh, again, I think it all goes back to, to relationships. And the one thing I talk about with the guys, especially with my relationship with coaches, you know, I've been a player for them and now I coach with them. So I kind of know what it's like to go, you know, through this process and be recruited and be in their shoes. And, you know, we, the one thing about us, and I know Coach Foley talked about it, what makes us special is that we are a family. We're all really close. We spend a ton of time together outside of football. We all have each other's back. And I think a lot of kids in high school right now are looking for that, you know, find the right place for them. Is it a family? Are they going to push me in the right way? Um, how are they going to help me beyond football? We guys made a push into Pennsylvania in recruiting this in, in, in 2023 class. And I'm sure have intentions to do more of that. Going ahead, what, what, uh, it's, it's not been a state that has produced a lot for Nebraska um, for a while. What, what um, do Pennsylvania high school players have that's um, that's positive in your in, in your opinion and, and can add to this? Place? Yeah, well, I think I'm a little biased because I'm from there, but um, they always got tough, athletic, really good football players, and so. Our job is trying to find the right ones that are for us, and obviously the talent is a huge deal. So we're gonna we're gonna go out and try to find the best ones, talented wise, and you know for the for the program the right fit. What did you take from your time in the NFL specifically, you kind of coaching different level athletes there? Yeah, uh, I think I think the biggest thing that I took away with it is they're all they're all like us, like. You know, I think there's a perception sometimes that like all oh, these guys make a lot of money, you know, prestigious athletes are always in the media, but they're all like us. They all want to learn. They all want to get better. If you have any good nuggets of information to help them, they're all willing to listen and learn. And um, I really enjoyed my time with them. A really good group of guys. Anything else for Coach? No. All right. Thanks. Thank, Thank you, guys. guys.